What is up guys? My name is Lex. Welcome back to the vlog. Tonight we're playing a 510 No Limit session here at Texas Card House. If you guys have been following along with my videos this month, you know I have been running super hot. I had the biggest win of my entire career and now I am up $40,000 in the month of February. It has just been insane. I've been running good. I've been getting in all the right spots, getting paid off, haven't been getting any bad beats. It's just a perfect storm for an amazing month of poker. Hopefully we can keep it up tonight in this big live stream game. There's a ton of action players with a lot of money, so the game is going to get huge. Let's get down to the table, let's get to the action, let's go. Taking our seat, the first hand we play here, there's an under the gun limp for $10. Danny raises it up to $50. There's two callers. I have ace nine of diamonds in the big blind. I wanna get in there and play some pots. So I make the call, we go five ways to the flop. Board is 10, 8, 7, 1 diamond. We flop open ended with an over card and a backdoor flush draw. Pretty good board for me. Instead of check calling on this board, I decide to mix it up and lead out here for around a half size pot bet of $125. I end up getting two callers and we see the six of diamonds on the turn, giving me a straight. Not only does this six give me a straight, I also pick up the nut flush draw as well. I didn't get raised on the flop, so I don't expect my opponents to have a set or two pair in my mind. So I continue for a $250 bet, really trying to keep them in there with all their one pair hands. I end up getting two callers again, so we're going to the river, which is a brick. It's a deuce of hearts. With $1,400 in the middle, I have a straight and I don't want to bet too big here. I want to get called by all of my opponents one pair, two pair, and sets. I don't want them to hero fold those hands, so I decide to go with another small bet of $300 and the under the gun player has a set of sevens. He thinks for a while, but eventually he puts in the call. We show the ace nine to take down our first pot here, playing on the live stream on a Wednesday night at Texas Card House in Dallas. I started off this session buying in for $5,000 and right off the bat we're almost up 1,000 bucks within the first 20 minutes of our session. Next up there is a double straddle on the blinds are at 5, 5, 10, 20. There's an early position raise to $60. I have ace eight of clubs next to act. I decide to three bet here. I feel like I should be three bet or folding this hand and this time I decide to bump it up to $200. I don't want to get squeezed out by the blinds. And I also really don't want to go multi-way with a hand that has some reverse implied odds. Initial razor, Mike ends up making the call. So we're heads up in position to the flop of queen, three, deuce, one club. All in all, it's a pretty good flop for us. We do miss, but we should have the range advantage here. I feel like if I bet the flop and bet the turn, I can get him to fold all of his pocket pairs like sixes through pocket jacks. I wager $150 and Mike pretty quickly makes the call. So we're going to the turn, which doesn't help us at all. It's a nine of hearts. It doesn't give us any extra equity. When checked to me, I consider checking this one back, but I do feel like this is a spot where I can double barrel and he'll be in a pretty tough spot with everything but a queen or a set of nines. I settle on one pink chip, $500 going in the middle. I think to myself, if he calls here and the river is a low brick card, I'll most likely fire a triple barrel. However, Mike turned a set of nines and our bet is not going to work. He ends up raising us up here and we make the snap fold. It's like just $1,200 and Lexo's gonna snap fold. Nice hand for bridge Mike. And just like that, we lose all the profit from our first hand. Next up, there's a cutoff raise to $60 over a $20 straddle. I have ace queen offsuit in the big blind. Decide to three bet here to $250 and the cutoff makes the call. We flop middle pair on king, queen, nine, two clubs, a very connected board. My opponent could smash this with some two pair sets and straight. So out of position, I decide to check and he instantly checks back. The turn is a six of spades. I have showdown value here. There's not too many hands I can get value from by betting. So I check again and he checks back again. The river is the deuce of spades. And now I feel like I can go for a little bit of value. I assume he'd be betting a top pair, a straight, a set on the flop or the turn. So I lead out for $600 and we get snap called by King Jack and we're not going to be winning this one. Looking back, I think checking two streets on this board is fine, but the river sizing was a little bit too big. I don't think a pot size bet is good here. I think I should be going one third size of the pot or one half size of the pot, but we end up betting the pot and losing the maximum. A pretty fun hand develops here where there's an under the gun limp for $10 and Galoo, who is a very fun action player, decides to put in a rather large raise of $110. There is three callers. I look down at king 10 of diamonds in the blinds and not going to be folding a suited Broadway hand for $100. So I make the call. We go six ways to a king seven king board. We flop trips. 
This is how Texas poker is. Sometimes going four, five, six, seven ways to the flop. The action is just insane. Checks over to Galu, who puts out a bet of $135. There is two callers, and the action is over on me, and I decide to just make the call with my trip kings with a 10 kicker. With all these people in the pot, I could be up against a better king, like ace king, king queen, and king jack. I can also be up against pocket seven, so I decide to just make the call here, and we see the jack of clubs on the turn. I check. Galoo checks and now Phil puts out a bet of $450. The action is over on me and now we have a decision to make whether we want to call or spring the trap and put in a raise. It is possible we could be beat here by king queen or king jack or pocket sevens. I don't think Phil has ace king because he should be three betting that preflop. He could have a flush draw. However, I don't think that he would be betting this big with a flush draw into all these people. So I think his likely holdings are the hand that he has right now, which is like ace jack with the ace of hearts or possibly queen jack with the jack of hearts. He calls pretty light on the flop, so he can have all the combinations of a jack x hand. So I decide to make the call looking to potentially lead out on all brick rivers. $2,200 in the middle. We see the three of diamonds on the river, one of the biggest bricks you can get. And now I have to decide whether I want to check it over to him or lead out. I don't think he's going to be value betting any jack x holding on the river. And he might even check back a king x holding, thinking that I might have a better kicker than him. So I decide to lead out here for value $800. For this sizing, I don't think Phil is ever going to be folding a pair to me. He thinks for a while and decides to put in the call. Nice hand for Lexo. Getting three streets of value there. Check calling flop, check calling turn, leading river. After this hand, we are up now $1,500 on the session. Moving on here, there's a limp for $20. I have seven deuce offsuit on the button. Decide to get in there, get a little bit funky for the live stream and raise it up to $150. I guess they're not doing the seven deuce game, but Lexo deciding to raise the button with the seven deuce. We are not playing the seven deuce bounty game, but for some reason, I just had a feeling I wanted to play it here on the button. So I raise it up. I get three callers, four ways to the flop of six deuce six. We flop a pair. So we get way out of line, raising it up to $150 with the worst hand you can ever get pre-flop. And we get three callers by some loose Texas call station players. What could possibly go wrong? That is sarcasm, guys. Do as I say, not as I do. Do not play the seven deuce game, especially if there's not a seven deuce bounty. We do flop a pair and it is hard to make a pair in this game. So I bet $325, get two callers. We see the three on the turn. It checks to me. I decide to check this one back and the six on the river giving us a full house. Six is full of deuces. Now the under the gun player, his name is Galoo. I do have a lot of hours with him the last three months playing here and he is super action. He's probably one of the only players at the table who is capable of putting in some monster bluffs at this game. He leads out for $1,000 and now we got ourselves in a tough spot. Here, though I doubt, he, I mean he's just <laughs> very unlikely Galoo can have a six here. Losing to Obviously, any bigger pocket pair, and even a random three. <laughs> Lexo asking Galoo if he has a three. According to the Zebo theory, no player is capable of folding a full house no matter what the bet size is. Now, I don't really agree with that. I could be folding some full houses to some players, but not Galoo. The bluffer is going to get paid off this time. I put in the chip and he shows me pocket eights for a better full house. I think Lexo would just snap fold, but Galoo just has so many bluffs. Just so many random hands that he has, like ace five, uh, seven eight. <laughs> This should be a lesson to all of you guys. Even if you're playing on stream and not trying to look like a nit, don't just go light $1,500 plus on fire trying to play seven deuce. Just make the fold. All right, now we're down even more money. Time to play some good poker. There is three $20 straddle limps to me. I have pocket queens in the big blind. I raise it up here to $175. Get three callers going to the flop of deuce for deuce. Where was that flop last hand? I'm kind of hoping that by showing the seven deuce hand that I was capable of raising a hand like that, maybe I will get some more light action. Even though this table is already a ton of action as it is, I continue here for $325. It folds back over to Bridge Mike, 
and the small blind who makes the call. We are in a great spot to win a big pot here. 92% equity bridge. Mike only has one out and he hits it. A seven on the turn, giving him top full house. He checks over to me. I consider checking this one back, but there is so many hands that I don't want to give a free river card to. I decide to bet half the size of the pot, $700. If you guys remember back to the first hand when Bridge Mike turned a set of nines, he check raised me and we snap folded our ace high. However, this time we have an over pair on a pretty dry board. There's really not that many hands that we're losing to. So when Mike check raises me here to $1,500, I am hating this spot right now. I'm getting flashbacks to October and November when I played on stream and I always either made the wrong decisions or the wrong calls and I just could never run good and now we're just running into it again. The likelihood that Bridge Mike is min check raising at a position on the turn with a bluff is just extremely low. I feel like he's one of the only players at the table who is probably not ever bluffing in this spot. I feel like he always either has a deuce here, pocket fours, or pocket sevens. With that being said, it is only basically a min raise. There is still some sliver of hope that I may be ahead and the river will go check, check, or maybe the river is a diamond. He checks to me and I could try to bluff him off of a deuce. So I decide to make the call and we see an eight of diamonds on the river. Another terrible card. If he was semi-bluffing the turn with a combo straight and flush draw, he now got there on the river. He continues for $1,500 and we are in a gross spot. All of his bluffs on the turn got there. I don't think he's ever betting a hand for value for this sizing that we are beating. So I know I'm going to fold. I just do a little Hollywood and let this one go. Six, even five, six offsuit on the turn. A five, six suit on the turn. River to straight. And I think that's the conclusion that Lexo comes to, and he does make the very good fold. I go into my pocket and bring out some chips and give some cash to the dealer and add on to my stack. I'm now in the game for $11,000, sitting on a little over 8,000 bucks before the next hand comes up where Galoo raises it up. There's a call. I have Jack-10 offsuit in the straddle, and I make the call as well. We completely miss on an ace high board and the action checks all the way around. The turn is the jack of spades now giving me a pair. It checks to me. I bet $200 and only Galoo makes the call. The river is the deuce of spades. I decide to check and now after thinking for a while, Galoo puts out a pot size bet of $600. Facing this bet sizing, I don't think I have to defend with a call as often. We're losing to some slow played ace high hands on the flop. Better jacks like king jack, queen jack, maybe queens or kings. We're losing to backdoor flushes. We're not really beating many hands, just some king or queen high hands that he's bluffing with. So I decided to let this one go and it turns out to be the wrong fold. He just had king high. We are now in the hole about $3,000. I just keep making the wrong decisions. I'm either calling wrong, I'm folding wrong, and it's just getting really annoying. Luckily in this next hand, we do find a small pot that we could win here where there's a $40 straddle. I raise to $150 with ace jack, get two callers, flop an ace. I bet they both call the turn. I bet and they fold and we finally take down a decent sized pot. Next hand, I'm going to blur out my opponent's hand so that you can sweat the action with me. I make it $50 with queen 10 over a limp. The button calls, limper calls. We flop top pair. I continue for $125. The button calls, limper folds. The turn is the queen of spades, giving me top two pair. Finally, after a couple hours of basically nothing, we make top two pair make a pretty big hand here. I decide to bet $425, a pot size bet. I want to be betting this big with all my value hands and some of my big draws like King Jack, Ace King of Diamonds, Ace Jack of Diamonds. My opponent on the button decides not to call, but put in a raise. He raises it up here to $1,000. So immediately, I don't feel the best about the situation. The reason why is that the button player really has not been playing many hands. He's been playing pretty passive all night. I haven't seen him bluff once. I haven't seen him really get out of line. A couple times he flopped the nuts and bet. So now I feel like I could be getting coolered against fours or fives. Maybe he has a hand like king, queen of diamonds, ace, king of diamonds, queen, jack of diamonds. But would he really raise that hand? I feel like he would just call. One important thing to note here is the button only has $1,200 left. Not too much money to bluff me with on the river if he is bluffing here, which means he's probably leaning more towards value hands. However, we have top two pair. There's no way I'm going to be folding. The question is, should I just rip it all in or should I just make the call? 
In real time, I felt like a call was the best play, so I put in the chips. So we're going to the river in a pretty sizable pot here. With top two pair, we see the seven of diamonds, which is not the best card. If he was bluffing with a flush draw, he got there. I check, and he instantly jams all in. Ah, uh, just another nasty spot, just over and over and over again. We do have a great hand, however, the way he's played his hand, I feel like top two pair is probably not ever good here. I go into the tank for a while, start thinking over the hand, trying to run it back in my brain to try to figure out what I want to do. He raised on the turn, which is pretty strong, facing a pot size bet from me. If he did have one of those hands like ace queen, or king queen i'm pretty sure he would check that back on the river i don't think he would ever be going all in with just a single pair on this river i just cannot make up my mind here keep going back and forth whether i want to call or fold i don't really see any bluffs in his range here once the diamond gets there on the river we're losing to a set of fours a set of fives losing to eight six for a straight any flush that he might have raised on the turn and queen x of diamonds while I'm thinking over my decision, I want you guys to pause the video, go down into the comments and tell me what you would do before you see the results. I want you to pretend like you're in the situation with me. Would you call here with top two pair or would you make the hero fold? After tanking for over two minutes, I let this one go and the button shows the queen of diamonds and he has the king of spades for just top pair. I'm not sure if he was bluffing here or value betting. I have no idea what the hell just happened in this hand. Well, I'm officially on tilt. He was just trying to gift me his stack and I just could not make the right decision. The whole hand really didn't make much sense at all. He raised on the turn with just top pair king kicker and then jammed all in when the flush got there after I called the raise on the turn. It just doesn't make much sense, but he got us to fold the best hand and now we're stuck even more money. I'm having a hard time controlling my emotions here. I'm getting pretty on tilt. I've made the wrong decision so many times in the last couple months on live streams. And now again, we make the wrong fold when we should have won a big pot. However, it's poker. We got to be tough. Moving on to the next hand, there's a $20 straddle, a limp. There's a raise to $70. We have pocket queens on the button. Let's get some money back. We three bet to 300 bucks. The action now folds over to the under the gun limper, OFC, and he goes into the tank. He is a wild card. He plays solid, but sometimes he likes to get out of line and put people in tough spots. And this time is one of those times he decides to put in the limp re-raise, the limp four bet to $1,800. When I saw this $1,800 raise, my mind just went, what the hell is going on? He limps and now limp re-raises to a massive sizing of $1,800. What kind of hands could he be doing this with? It's a super large raise. However, this game has been playing crazy action. We are massively deep, over $8,000 deep at a 510 game. Most of the time, a limp back four bet raise to $1,800 would always be aces, kings, or ace, king suited. However, OFC does have a little wild card in him, and you can see that he has ace, jack offsuit here. I guess he was just trying to attack the dead money in the middle. Phil ends up making the call for $1,800, and now the action is back over on me. Lucky for you guys, you get to see what my opponents have in real time. However, when I was in this spot, I had no idea what my opponents can have. And all I know is that a limp four bet to $1,800 is screaming some pretty big strength. Sitting 400 big blinds deep at a cash game is extremely deep. So I don't think five bet jamming all in for 400 bigs is the best play here with pocket queens, which means our only option is to just make the call. Given this pot size, if there's no ace, king, or jack on the flop, I'm probably just going to be going with my hand. So we're three ways to a massive $5,500 pot. We see a board of ace high and queens are officially cracked. I hate this flop because one of my opponents most likely has ace king here and OFC decides to bet $800 and when Phil calls, I just have an annoying fold. They hit a one outer on me, by the way. The ace of hearts was dead, so that's the second time we got one outed with pocket queens today. And he has to know one of these players has to have an ace. And he makes the discipline fold. 
This pot goes on to be the biggest pot played on the live stream. $17,000 when the river is a 10. Phil bets $4,000 in OFC tank calls with Ace Jack. Just an insane run out, an insane hand there. Things are just not going my way tonight. I'm in the game for $11,000 and now my stack is dipped below $6,000. Phil just won a massive pot and has a stack of over 17K. So I reach deep down in my bag and pull out 10K to add on. Now we got $15,000 to play for. With a $25 mandatory straddle under the gun now, I look down at the ladies again. Don't do me wrong. This time, sitting on over $15,000, I raise it up to $100. I get three callers and see a board of ace, king, queen, flopping a set. OFC just folds his hand. Chris checks over to me, and with bottom set here, I decide to give Galoo some rope and check over to him, hoping that he'll either take a stab with a total airball bluff or overvalue a worse hand. He does put out some chips. $175. Chris gets away from his hand, and against a player like Galoo, I want to give him some rope and let him to continue to bluff on the turn, so my plan here is to check call the flop and then try to check raise any non-10 or jack turn card. Four of clubs waiting to put in that check raise, but unfortunately, Galoo checks this one back. The river is a nine, and now I think he has a hand like King X, or maybe even the last queen in the deck. I think he would most likely be betting ace high hands on the flop, so I lead out small here, trying to get called by any pair. I make it $300. He thinks for a while, and eventually tells me he's gotta pay me off. Puts in the call. After putting in the chips, he shows me an ace, which is just more tilting. I flopped a set versus top pair versus an action player who does not like to fold, and I basically won the minimum. This turns out to be the last notable hand we end up playing on stream. I ended up losing $4,700 in four hours, but our poker session is not done yet. We're going to continue to play off stream. Filming now with my camera phone, there's a $40 raise in the cutoff. Button calls, small blind calls, we have the angels, the rockets, pocket aces, finally a good spot here. I put in a three bet squeeze for value. I bump it up to $275. Stuck almost 5k, you are begging for action with pocket aces, but unfortunately we get no calls, so we just take down the dead money preflop. We move to get a better viewpoint for the vlog. We call a raise on the button with ace five of clubs and flop top pair call a bet on the flop. The turn goes check check and the river my opponent puts out a bet. I make the call with my top pair five kicker and he shows ace deuce for two pair and we lose another pot. We're stuck now almost 6,000 bucks. We started the session up $40,000 profit for the month of February, but so far we have been running so bad. This is what I was worried about when the downswing comes in. It hits hard. We've lost basically every pot tonight, and we've made the wrong decision numerous times to get us stuck over $6,000. It's now past midnight. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should just go home and book the massive loss of $6,000, but then the next hand, we're in the under the gun straddle and look down at pocket kings under the gun plus one the action player galoo from the stream limps for twenty dollars and now an unknown player in the small blind it looks like a recreational player puts in a raise to 150 dollars now the action is back over on me it's pretty simple i'm stuck tons of money and i have a great hand so i bump it up let's play for more i three bet here to 425 dollars to my surprise glue calls 425 dollars and now the action is back over on the small blind the small blind started the hand with five thousand dollars he reaches down to his stack and grabs some black chips and then adds a 1k chip to it and throws out fourteen hundred dollars a five bet a re re-raise to $1,400. Wow, facing a five bet with pocket kings, we are stuck heaps on this session. Maybe this is the hand will get us back to even. Now, of course, he can have pocket aces and we could get coolered here. However, we cannot be scared of monsters under the bed. My opponent started the hand with 250 big blinds, so I got one option and that is all in. All right. He said all in. I called. Oh. Want to run it once or twice? Once. Two. 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 Two.
two full boards. We six bet jam all in with pocket kings. My opponent makes the call. We're playing over a $10,000 pot. I'm stuck $6,000. If I lose this hand, I will have lost over $11,000. The biggest loss of my poker career. My heart is racing. I have no idea if I'm ahead or behind. Please let us win this pot. It all comes down to this. We flop top set on the top board. No ace, king, queen, or jack on the second board. My opponent shows pocket jacks, and we hold to an over a $10,000 pot. We were getting crushed all night, and just like that, we are right back to even. What an incredible spot to be in. I thought I was going to be booking a massive loss. My adrenaline is pumping. I can hardly even hold my camera straight to video my chips. My adrenaline is going insane right now. We end up playing one more hand where we have pocket queens. There's a race to $125. We three bet to $375 on the button. We flop a set. He checks. I put out a bet. He makes the call. The turn he checks, I bet. And we take down the pot, and that is going to be it for this crazy roller coaster session of the night. We end up racking up our chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out. All right, guys, that is it for this one. I'm pretty sure we just played the craziest, swingiest, wildest poker session of my life. Ended up in the game buying in for $21,000. $21,000 buy-in, I was stuck over $6,000. At one point, I was making the wrong folds, I was making the wrong calls, I was running bad, I just could not win a single pot for like a five hour period, stuck over $6,000, and then pocket kings versus pocket jacks, the biggest pot of the night, $10,000 plus pot, ended up taking that one down in the game for $21,000, cashing out for $21,500, for a $500 profit, I will take it. That puts us to $41,000 profit for the month of February. I am super grateful. I cannot believe I've been running this good for this long and it's just like, it's basically like a dream, but I am super grateful that I'm running this good. But after watching the stream, watching some of the hands I played, I have a lot to work on. I mean, poker does a great job at just humbling you. Like you think you're doing well, you're running good. I was on a high all week and I just got crushed during that live stream. I was playing bad, I was punting, I was making bad calls, I just could not do anything right. So I'm gonna have to really work on my game. I'm going to try to really focus on making better decisions and trying not to make the same mistakes I've made in the past, which has cost me a ton of money. And I feel like that's the only thing we really can do. When we go play poker, we don't know if the cards are gonna be in our favor or out of our favor, but really all we can do is try to make the best decision. And if you make mistakes, try to learn from those mistakes and get better next time. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to learn from my mistakes and hopefully not make those same mistakes next time. But that is it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, and subscribe. Subscribe for Rogue. If you like dogs, if you like Rogue, subscribe for him. We're trying to get to 40,000 subscribers by March. Help me get there. That is it for this one. Till next time, I'll see you.